Good morning. Welcome to Warner Temple, AME Zion Church. Oh, what a blessing it is that you all have gathered here with us this morning. We thank God for the beautiful weather, and we thank God for those of you who are gathered here with us in our parking lot, those who are watching by way of social media. We encourage you to share this with your friends. We thank you for being a part of the Warner Temple AME Zion Church. Today is National Grandparents Day. We're going to be celebrating our grandparents. God bless you, grandparents. We love you, and we appreciate you. The day started um, by, um, in 1969, a nine-year-old by the name of um, Russell Caper wrote President Nixon and asked, can we have a day to honor grandparents? Well, his press secretary responded and said, no, I mean, really, you can't start a day like that. It has to be passed through Congress. So in 1970, this lady started petitioning senators and asking them to let's have a day to celebrate and honor grandparents. It didn't officially happen until 1977 when Congress passed a resolution or proclamation to honor grandparents. And in 1978, President Jimmy Carter at that time announced the National Grandparent Day. And so he said in his proclamation that there are three things we want to do to honor grandparents. Number one, we want to honor grandparents. Number two, we want to give grandparents an opportunity to show love for their children's children. And then he said, and the third thing is we want grandparents to know we want them to help children become aware of the strength, information, and guidance older people can offer. So we just congratulate you and honor you this morning, grandparents who are here, as well as those who are watching us throughout social media. Let me remind you too that the official flower for a grandparents day is the Forget Me Not. Forget Me Not is the official flower. And the song was written by Jim Prill and the song is entitled A Song for Grandma and Grandpa. By way of announcements today at 2.30, we will have our class leaders meeting. We invite you to be a part of that class leader. It's on the Zoom. Also continuing our Bible studies on Wednesday, our Sunday school today at 11.15. You can join us. Please join us for Sunday school. Also, we want to honor and, and congratulate Mrs. Linda Stanley. This week, yes, this week, the Dozier Memorial Hospital Board of Trustees appointed Linda Standy to serve as the president and CEO of the Dozier Memorial Hospital. What an honor, what an honor. And we are so humbly proud. We want to remind you that on the 3rd of October is the president, not the president, it's presiding elder Jones's appreciation, and that will be at 3 o'clock. The last announcement I want to share with you is this. On next Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to call next Sunday, It Could Have Been Me Sunday. Okay, listen to me carefully. Next Sunday, we're calling next Sunday, It Could Have Been Me. Because what we're going to do next Sunday is we're going to take up a special offering to help those, our sisters and brothers who are in Hades, and those, our sisters and brothers, who were affected by the Hurricane Ida that went all across from, from Haiti Sioux, um, New Orleans, and ended up in New York. We want to bring a special gift, okay? Now, I need you to help me because the Bible says you're to give your tithes and your offering, okay? Meaning that we continue to give our tithes, but we also, God may call us at times to offer an offering. And so on next Sunday, we want to give a substantial offering to help those who are less fortunate than we are. Because see, as we think about it next week, and I'll be preaching from the subject, it could have been me. Does anybody remember what happened when Florence came to? Anybody remember how challenging it was? Okay, and so next Sunday, we're going to help our missionaries, and we're going to bring the best gift we can offer as we share with those who are perhaps not now, right now, right now, less fortunate than we are. So next Sunday, we invite all of you to be a part of our It Could Have Been Me Sunday. Let's open in prayer. Father, what a great day this is. It's a day that you have made. It's a day that we honor our grandparents, and we honor those who have made many sacrifices for us. 
God, can I just stop right now and just say thank you? Man, thank you for the offerings that they gave. Thank you for the time that they gave. Thank you for the gifts that they gave. Thank you for the examples that they set and they modeled. And God, I pray that you'll just continue to give our grandparents strength and wisdom and continue to hold them in the palm of your hands. God, I ask you now that everything that we say and do, may it put a smile on your face. Be in this place with us, Lord, as we honor and glorify you. May everything said and done be pleasing in your sight. For it's in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Transition. Not on earth. Not on earth. Unmoved can't stand. Build your hopes on things. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody say, hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand, listen, trust in him, trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring. Whatsoever years may bring. If my earthly friends forsake him. If my earthly friends forsake him. Still more closely to him clean. Still more closely to him clean. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's un God's unchanging hand. Here we go, ho. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hope, keep. Build your hope, keep praying. Build your hope, keep singing. Build your hope, build your hopes. Build your hopes on things eternal. Everybody ought to hold. Changing hands. Amen. Amen. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Thank you, God. Thank you. I want to share with you from a scripture from written by Paul. It's second, the second epistle of Paul written to a believer, to a, to a mentee by the name of Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Now, let me just set the scene for you for a moment. Paul is writing to perhaps his closest companion. Paul is writing to his mentee, the one who he wants to pour into the most. But you got to understand the circumstances. Paul right now finds himself in a Roman prison. The Roman prison was a cell. It was a dungeon. It was dug in the ground. And it didn't have many, it had little walls, but it just had one little window, one little opening in the ceiling. And that opening was there only to throw food down for the prisoner. And these prisons were really very cold in the winter. And so Paul finds himself in this Roman prison. And what Paul understands is that you need to understand this, as this is Paul's last letter that he ever writes. This is his last thing, these last statements from Paul. And Paul understands that in this prison, he realizes, I will probably not come out alive. He understands that he will soon be executed. His head will be cut off. He understands that. As a matter of fact, in chapter 4, Paul says, For now my, uh, my appointed time has come. I am 
being poured out as an offering. But I have, Paul says, fought a good fight. And I've finished the course. I've kept the faith. So Paul wasn't worried about dying. But he wanted to pour into Timothy, this young preacher. And what you got to understand as we read this text is you'll note that Paul, when he writes to Timothy, his introduction is only like this in Titus. All of the other books that Paul writes, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians, Galatians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, all of the other books that Paul writes, Paul writes and talks about peace and grace. But in this passage, Paul says, not only do I want peace and grace, he says, but I also want mercy. And he says that in his pastoral epistles, only to Timothy and Titus. And you'll find these words. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded it is in you also. I want to talk just for a few moments from the subject entitled Grand's Help. Grand's Help. Father, may the words of my mouth And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. May the words we say go out and, and draw others closer to you. May somebody cry out, what must I do to be saved? May somebody cry out, yes, God, I want to be drawn closer to you. May those who are unsure become sure. We pray, God, that your word will speak and bring forth that which it is promised to do. And when you do, we'll give you the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grand's help. When I was growing up, if you met somebody in the neighborhood, and let's say you were starting to date or getting ready to date, we had this crazy custom in that, that you would bring that person to the house, and you would introduce that person to your parents and your grandparents. And as sure as I'm standing here, one of the first questions that would come out of my mom or my grandmama's mouth was, who are your people? Who are your parents? Who are your grandparents? Because see, somehow or another, they understood that if, if I can connect with who you come from, if I can connect with you and your grandparents and your parents, somehow or another, that's going to give me an idea of what kind of person you are. So Paul writes this letter to Timothy, and he shares with Timothy that, that I, I, I know you. I, I, I know something about you, Timothy, because I know your grandmother. Mm. I know something about you, Timothy, because I know your mother who was raised by your grandmother. And what I know about your grandmother is that whatever your grandmother had, somehow or another, Timothy, it had to get passed through to your mama. And, and somehow or another from your mama, perhaps it got down to you. But what I know about your grandmother, Timothy, is what I also know uh, surely about you. And what I want to share with you this morning is that we thank God for grands, for, for grandparents who, who modeled a life of Christianity around us. We thank God for grandparents who helped. 
Oh, how many people know that if it hadn't been for grandmama or granddaddy, mm, if grandmama or granddaddy hadn't stepped in, if grandmama or granddaddy hadn't given a word of comfort, if grandmama or granddaddy hadn't given words of encouragement, how many people know I'm just, I was talking to Reverend Armour on last night, and he said, you know what, Clifford? I'm a product of a grandmother. Mm. I'm a product of a grandmother, somebody who took time to take care of me. Well, I want to say, and I want to say it unequivocally, that grands help. Grands help. Grands, number one, are people of influence. They influence our parents. They influence their children. They influence their children's children. Grandparents help. Grands help by being a person of influence. Because see, grandchildren watch grandmama and granddad. Grandchildren listen to grandmama and granddad. Grandchildren pick up clues from grandmama and granddad. Grandparent children pick up and imitate grandmama and granddad. As a matter of fact, you ever see your children act? just like their grandparents, take on their mannerisms, their way of life. And what I want to just share with you, grandparents, is this. Never underestimate the power of your influence. Never underestimate how much you give and what you do will be an influential piece or part of your grandchildren's life. As a matter of fact, it will pass on from your children's children to your children's children's children. Grandparents are people of influence, but also grandparents who help are people of inspiration. Anybody know that grandparents can motivate you? They can give you energy. Grandparents can can many times they will, will do more for grandchildren than the parents in the sense that, that they motivate you and inspire you and pick you up. They, they kind of gesture simple notes of congratulations and it lifts you. They kind of suggest that I'm proud of you and, and they push you and they encourage you and they nourish you and nudge you and they lead you forward. They inspire us. Grands help. Grands inspire us to never give up. Mm. Grands inspire us by saying, boy, you can do that. Oh, that's okay. You'll get through that. Grands inspire us because they'll say crazy things like, you'll be all right. It's going to work out. It may be dark right now, but it's going to be light in the morning. Grandparents are ones that inspire us. They do crazy things like they pray with us, and they pray for us, and they read the Bible to us, and they read the Bible with us, and they're always talking about something about God. Mm. Always saying something about God and reminding us to never give up and to never quit. Grandparents are inspirational because they are always in your corner. Even though the world may be beating you down, or even though at times it seems like everybody around you is putting you down, grandmama and granddaddy will say something like, but, but God's got a plan for that boy. Mm -hmm. God's got a plan for that girl. God's not finished with him yet. God's not through with him yet. Listen, I, I, I bet my word on, I bet my life, God's got a plan for him. God's gonna make something out of him. You, you don't give up, boy, because God's got something in store for you. God's gonna fix it. God's gonna work it out. She might say something like, you're just going through a tough spot, but God's gonna carry you through. I remember my grandma would say things like, things happen. They happen for a reason, but you just keep going. Just keep walking forward. Just keep lifting your head up. She would say this crazy statement. She said, because there's, there's a bright side mm, somewhere. 
My grandma was saying, don't you rest, don't you stop, don't you give up, don't you quit, don't you throw your head down and be bowed down. You just keep working and keep striving until you find it. And so Paul says in this passage of scripture about Lois, he says, I know that it's in you because it was also in your mama and in your grandmother a genuine faith. Now, I, I noticed when I read this passage, this is the only time that Timothy's grandmother is ever mentioned. The only time in Acts, when Paul first meets Lois, Eunice and Timothy, he recognizes that, that Lois, or Eunice rather, Timothy's mom is a believer, but his father is a Greek who was a non-believer at the time. But it's the only time in scripture that Lois, his grandmother, is ever mentioned. And yet, what Paul says is, because I know your grandmother, because I know how she lived, I know how she carried herself, because I know her faith in God, I am certain it's in you. Mm. So listen, grands who help, grands who help are inspirational, grands who help are those who are influential, but also grands who help leave a little something in you. Mm. Leave a little something in you. It's, it's in you, your, your grandparents. It's, it's in you, whether, whether you like it or not. It's in your DNA. It's in you because you've had the opportunity to be around them. It's in you. What's in me? Grandmama's toughness. What's in me? My grandmama's stubbornness. What's in me? Our grandparents' artistic ability. What's in us? Our grandparents' sense of humor. What's in us? Our grandparents' grace and patience. What's in us? Our grandparents' strength to keep on keeping on. What's in us? Our grandparents' ability to make things happen and to remind us that things will work out. What's in us? Our grandparents' way of taking little and making much, taking nothing and making something out of it. What's in us? Well, if you've hung around grandmama or grandparents just long enough, doesn't have to be a long time. You don't have to live with them, but just hang around them just a little while. You'll find that those grandparents who are grandparents who have sincere faith, genuine faith like Lois, not hypocritical faith, not hypocritical belief, not I'm this way one way, but I'm this way on another day. No, one who walks and talks the things that they walk and talk, you will find that their faith in God seems to have a way to be in you because they're not only influential, they're not only inspiring, but what they live has a way of being passed on to you. Uh, you know it's in you because after a while it's, it's like catching a cold. When you hang around somebody long enough who has a cold without even saying, let me catch that cold, before you know it, it's in you. Oh, and so, so that's why you would hear me say, so those who know you but don't know him would want to know him because they ran into you. It's, it's in you and sometimes I can see and hear my grandmama's voice and see her mannerisms and see my grandfather's way of thinking and stuff. It's in me because they stuck it in me. It's in me that I can handle any situation. It's in the way we walk and the way we talk. It's in our faith walk like Timothy's grandmother a genuine faith, not hypocritical. A genuine faith that, that says, I'm going to make it. A genuine faith that says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. A genuine faith that would make me drag my children to church because that's what grandmama did. A genuine faith that reminds us that God is gracious and merciful and patient and long-suffering and not willing that any should perish but all should have eternal life. A genuine faith that reminds us to read our Bible and pray for our children and our children's children. A genuine faith that says to us, even when things 
are difficult, that God's going to work it out. Mm. A genuine faith that tells us that, that his goodness and his mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. A genuine faith that proclaims and prophesies and exclaims that God has something better for you. Mm. That God has something good right around the corner from you. A genuine faith that says no matter how bad it looks or how bad it feels, God is still in charge. God has something in store for you. God has a way that's back of no way. God will fix it. So your grandma's faith grants help because they instill in us that you're going to be all right. So they might say, boy mm, or girl, they may call you sugar or baby or tutu or little boy over there. Mm. They may call you by some nickname or some cute name that they gave you when you were two or three years old, but they would remind you that no matter how difficult life is, no matter how trying it may be right now, they would say, but you just trust in God. Mm. You just keep your hand in God's hand. You just hold to his hands, to his unchanging hands. He, they would say stuff, crazy stuff like, no matter how dark it got, they would say, listen, all you've got to do is just give it to Jesus. Mm. Just trust him. Trust him at his word. Trust him that he'll do what he said he would do. Trust him. Just turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over. Turn it over, your trials. Turn it over, your tribulations. Turn it over, your, your turmoil. Turn it over, your troubles. Turn it over, your tricks. Turn it over, your temptation. Turn it over, your teenagers with challenge. Turn it over, with troubled teens. Turn it over. With trouble, 21s, 22s, 23s, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, Clifford, turn it over. Turn it over. Your trouble, 30s and 31s and 32s and 33s and 34, turn it over. Just turn it over to God. Your tough times, because he can work it out. And that song where he says he can work it out. Yes, he can Work it out, and then they say this crazy thing about, and yes, he will. Mm. I just want to let you know, yes, he will. He will work it out. Yes, he will. He will deliver you. Yes, he will. He will make a way out of no way. Yes, he will. He will take care of you. Yes, he will. Because mm. yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can, and he will. Yes, he can. And he can do it. Yes, he can, and he will. Yes, he can make ways out of nowhere. Yes, he can fulfill all of our desires. Yes, he can grant to us the things that are even far better than we can see or even imagine. Yes, he can. And so, God, we give thanks to grands who help, grands who inspire, grands who influence, but most importantly, grands who've left something in us. Uh, that in us thing keeps us going. That in us thing reminds us that we're going to be all right. That in us thing reminds us that no matter what comes our way, God is greater. That in us thing reminds us that if you just put your hand in his hand, mm, that in us thing reminds us that all you got to do is just put one foot in front of the other. Because somebody said, he'll make, if you make one step, he'll make two. That in thing that says, God will be with you come hell or high water like Lois in the life of Timothy. I see it in you. I see it in you. That tenacity. I see it in you. That ability to not give up. I see it in you. The stubbornness. I see it in you. Your willingness to fight for it. I see it in you. The God that your grandmama and your granddaddy had has been passed on to you, and it's our desire to pass it on to our children and our children's children. I see it in you. Paul says to Timothy, 
about his grandmother, Lois. And then he says this to Timothy. He says, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I challenge you, you, those, as we celebrate grandparents this morning, I challenge you to take on their spirit, their spirit that reminds us that God is still in charge, that spirit that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I challenge you to stir up the gift that is in you and remind ourselves that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a strong mind. Go forth. Go forth and honor the lives of those who have gone on before us. Go forth and honor your grandparents. How do I honor them? Mm. I honor them by stirring up the gift that's in me. I honor them by living a life that's pleasing to him. I honor them by remembering the things that they taught us in order that we might become the sons and daughters of God, that God desires us to be. Can you give God some praise? I want to, um, as we close, I want to pray especially for grandparents. Um, if you're a grandparent and you're here, will you just put your flashers on? Don't, don't blow your horn because I don't want to wake up the neighbors. Just kind of put your flashers on. If, if you're, you're a grandparent or if you are, and see, one of the things I found about being grandparents is that you may not always be a biological grandparent. You may be one of those that's got a little boy down the street who likes to hang around you, and you, you become that grandparent to them. I want you to put your flashes on, and I want you right now to take a moment and think about the influence that you have on the kids who come across your path. I want you to think about how you are and have been an inspiration to those who somehow or another stumble to your house, uh, whether they were yours or your neighbor's children, but they just kind of stumble in and they sit down on your couch mm, and they just want a word from you because somehow or another they saw in you what God wanted them to see. I want you to think about that child, young man, whether he's 21, 31, 61, whatever age he might be, that comes by and, and just wants a word of, of consolation just from you, wants to hear from you, wants to be mindful of the fact, even though you may rake him over the coals, even though you might say, you know better than that. You're not supposed to do that. You know you messed up. But then they still... <clears throat> Have loving arms, arms that still wrap around you, mm, arms that still dry your tears, arms that still try to hold you up, arms that remind you that God is not finished with you yet. Mm. I want to pray for those kids. But then I also want to pray for you who have your lights flashing. I want to pray for you because... You're that inspiration. You're that influence. And sometimes I know we don't always feel that way. And I know sometimes we don't always feel like we've got the right words. But thanks be to God, through God's grace and mercy, he provides us with what we need to say. So let's go to God in prayer. Before we do, anybody want to give their life to the Lord? If you do, this is a great opportunity. It's time for you to say, yes, God, I hear your voice and I want to surrender my life to you. Or if by chance you're not sure of your salvation, this is a great time to talk to us about it. Those of you who are on social media, if you'll just send us a, a text message, we'll get right back to you. Those of you that are here, if you'll just let me know, I will talk to you about how you can continue to make sure that you're walking right with God. And if by chance you're here and perhaps you want to make this your church home, 
or you've got a church in your neighborhood where you want to be a part of, we'll help you connect with that. Because it's so important that you become a part of a Bible-believing church, that you become a part of a fellowship that will help you as you help others to continue to walk this walk of faith. And then lastly, if you have some prayer concerns, you may whisper them to me or you may put them in the chat, put them on the screen, and we'll pray for that as well. Let's go to God. Father, we thank you for these grandparents who are here under the sound of my voice. Those out in social media, those who are here in the parking lot flashing their flashes. God, we thank you because you've been a good God to us. Mm. We thank you, God, because you've allowed us to be able to give words of inspiration even when we didn't feel like it. Mm. You've allowed us to be able to say things and kind of help to turn kids' lives and young adults' lives and even senior adult lives around because of the words that would come out of our mouths and the life that we've attempted to live. God, we pray for health and strength. God, I don't want to thank you for cars or houses or thank you for money in the bank or shoes or clothes right now. No, God, I want to thank you for kidney and liver and thank you for blood yet running warm in our veins. Thank you, God, for eyes to see. Thank you, God, for taste in my tongue. Thank you, God, for hearing in our ears. Thank you, God, for feeling in our hands. God, thank you for keeping us away from COVID. Thank you, God, for being a healer and a provider. And so, God, we say thank you. God, lastly, we pray for the people who come into our lives. Those of you have placed intentionally, not by accident, but intentionally that that we might influence, that we might offer instructions, that we might give them inspiration, that we might pour something into them. Mm. God, help us not to get weary in our well-doing. God, help us not to stop. Help us not to give up, God. Help us to seek you and all that we do as we pass on to those who you have placed in our lives. God, we pray for those who are reaching out right now to you. Would you let them know that you are right there? If the Bible says that they open their heart, you will step in and be right there with them. Keep them in your care. God, may what we've said and done be pleasing in your sight. For it's in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Somebody prayed for me. Had me, had me on their mind. Took the time, took the time to pray for me. I'm so, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My mother. My mother prayed for me, had me, had me on her mind, took the time, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad, I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed, I'm so glad she prayed for me. My grandma prayed for me. Yes, she did. Had me on her mind. Took the time. Took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad she prayed. Yes. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. Amen. 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 May we ask you to continue <clears throat> to pray for those who may be struggling with COVID. We have a number of members within our church family who um, are right now struggling with COVID. Would you continue to lift them up in prayer? May I also challenge you to pray for um, our schools, pray for our teachers, our first responders, bus drivers, nurses, doctors, store clerks, those people who are coming in contact with individuals. I also want to challenge you, if you have not been vaccinated, please go and do that. Not only for you, but to protect those who are around you. I challenge you to remember to wash your hands, practice social distancing, and most importantly, 
wear a mask. We invite you to please wear a mask. And so on your way out, those of you who are grandparents, we are honored to give you today a mask. And the mask reads, Grand's Help. And it's worn at Temple 21. This is, a, this is something just to remind you of the importance that you have in the lives of the people who cross your path. So on your way out, you'll be able to pick up one of these. For everybody that's a grandparent, please uh, make sure that you get one on your way out. Lastly, next Sunday is our It Could Have Been Me Sunday. I invite you to bring your tithe as well as your offering. And we might be able to help those who have been affected by um, Ada and affected by the, the challenges in Hades as well as the challenges throughout the United States. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for a beautiful day. Mm. Another day that you have made. And I heard one preacher say, and you allowed us to see it. I, I didn't deserve it. I, I didn't do anything to, to, to earn this day, but you were gracious enough to allow to wake me up this morning. Mm. You were gracious enough to say, I'm going to give you another chance. And so, God, I want to thank you right now. God, I pray that you will bless everyone under the sound of our voices. I pray especially that you will continue to lift up grandparents. Hold them in your hands, God. Continue to support them. And I thank you, God, that they did pray for us, that they continue to pray for us, that we might become the persons that you would desire us to be. And now unto him who's able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please follow the directions of our, our uh, traffic attendants. Yes, sir. God bless you.